G'day, this is Charlie, and today I'm going to talk about backing up your WordPress website. Now, um, there are a couple of really good plugins around that allow you to easily back up your WordPress database. Uh, and in one of my other videos, I discuss the fact that the database is really um, <clears throat> the collection of text that goes around how your website, uh, or sorry, of the content that's on your website, as well as the settings. Uh, but it's not the physical files that go to make up your website, like all of your images, any audio or video that you might upload, or any downloadable documents uh, like PDF documents and such. Uh, so if disaster does strike and it does occasionally and you lose your website um, you could find that you have your database backed up but you've got none of the physical files that were used uh, in your posts and pages or or um, you might even lose your customized theme settings and your customized theme uh, that you've got for your site. It, it can be a bit stressful um, having to recreate everything and working out what you have and haven't lost. So today in this video what I'm going to talk about is a, an easy way that you can um, do full backups of your, your website, your WordPress website, uh, and automate those backups and have the, those backups stored in other locations other than your web host. Uh, I really don't recommend uh, having your backup stored on on the same host or the same web server that you that you have your website on. If something does go wrong and your web host isn't accessible and you need to get your site up really quickly, uh, you're you're really in for trouble if you've got it stored on the same site. So what I'd like to introduce you to uh, is, and I've got a tab open here, uh, Plugin Buddies Backup Buddy. Now I love this plugin. Uh, I found it about. Oh, six months ago, eight months ago, and I've been using it um, consistently since I saw it. Uh, there will be a link for this um, plugin on with this video. Uh, it will be my affiliate link, so and I do appreciate it if you support me when you buy it. Um, but it's entirely up to you if you use that link or not. Um, and this this plugin is fantastic. So once you've um, bought the plugin, uh, you do need to buy it. It is a played plugin. Plugin, uh, I think. I'm just going to go and check how much it is now. Um, I'm actually not sure how much it is at the moment. I think it's about fifty, fifty or sixty dollars. And um, trust me when I say that it will take fifty or sixty dollars worth of stress out of your life immediately. Uh, so I can't, I really can't recommend this plugin uh, more highly. Um, so once you've bought the plugin, you do need to install it into your blog and such. So I'm going to work, work through how we do all of that. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, um, let's assume that you've bought the plugin and you've downloaded it to your computer. I'm not going to go through that part of the process. What we now need to do is go and install the plugin on our WordPress website. So from our WP admin dashboard, uh, go to the plugins menu on the left hand side. Right here. Uh, and um, from there you can click on the add a new button. Now you could also click on the add new link in the menu under plugins here as well. Um, most people, however, click on the plugins uh, grey bar, so it's easier just to go from here. Now, we can't install this from uh, the repository, the WordPress repository or the WordPress plugin directory. Uh, so what we need to do is click on the upload button. Or the upload link, sorry. Now, you do need to know where your plugin is stored on your server um, or on your computer. Uh, that's pretty important to know. Once you get to the upload uh, screen, click on the browse button and you'll get a window pop up. Now I'm just going to navigate to uh, where I've got my plugins uh, stored. And I, I do it manually because I know where they are. But you can use the browsing capabilities of, of, of the dialog box to get you where you need to go. Pretty certain I've got it in this folder. Um, backup buddy. There it is there. Uh, and locate the zip file backupbuddy.zip on your local computer. 
Uh, click on it and you'll see that it goes into the file name box at the bottom of the window. Click on open and then click on install now. Now what that will do is upload the file from your local computer to your web host. It will unzip the file, put them into the right folders uh, and then when it's ready to go it will give you uh, the screen that says unpacking the package, installing the plugin, it's installed successfully, now we need to go and activate it. So click on activate. Okay, so we've activated the plugin. It's come up and you'll see here and amongst all of my other messages that I've got that we've got plugin activated. If I scroll down now, you'll see that we've got Backup Buddy in our list. Uh, we've got the ability to de deactivate it. Uh, more importantly, we've got the ability to license it. Now, if you click on the licenses link, ah, you'll see that I've already got a license um, activated for Black Play Backup Buddy. So I'm going to detach the license from this site. Um, okay, let's undo that and let's do that again. Click on licenses and uh, you'll see that you get uh, a pop-up window that says plug-in buddy uh, it's not licensed no standard key uh, and it prompts you to enter your um, plug-in buddy or iThemes member panel account details uh, into this window now you would have got those when you signed up for this when you when you bought plug-in buddy so you will need those uh, I'm just going to go and get my, my details and put them in here. Just bear with me and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, so I had to go and look up my um, username. I think that was my u Yes, that is my username and my password, which I've actually copied out of uh, the email that I got from Plugin Body. And I've just plugged it in there. I'm going to click Login. Now, this is actually going to go to the Plugin Buddy site. Uh, you'll see that... Um, it's giving me a list of existing licenses that I have for the site. Um, oh, sorry, that I have for um, Plugin Buddy already. I've bought a unlimited license. Now, if, if when you get into this screen, you're probably going to have Generate New License Key. Uh, so you can click on Generate New License Key. If you've only got one license, um, you'll have you'll you'll only be able to do this once, and you'll see that now I've generated the new license. It says it's been successfully licensed. The site, uh, the active license for the site, gives me the ability to detach it from the site as well. Once you've got the license installed uh, and activated, you can close that window down. Now you've got a fully functional version of Backup Buddy. Now what that will allow you to do, apart from use it. Um, fully is it will also uh, automatically check for updates for you uh, and update this the the sorry update the plugin as new updates come out uh, now to use plugin buddy that's just installing it and getting it active goodness gracious so when we um install backup buddy down on the left hand side you'll end up with a menu item called backup buddy uh, you can go to your settings menu first of all under Backup Buddy, please. And what you can do is uh, set up the plugin so that it will send you uh, a an email when scheduled backups or when scheduled or manual backups are done. Um, it depends on which boxes you check as to whether that email goes. More importantly, you need to put an email address in there. Uh, I tend not to because I look after a lot of sites and I really don't need to know that the backups are occurring. I have another process in place uh, to manage those backups. Um, you can set up an FTP, file transfer protocol, um, server that you send your backup buddy backups to. Uh, so this is good if you've got two web servers uh, and you can put you know, a backup on one server and a backup on another server. So you, what's not on one server, a backup on another server. That works. Um, I don't tend to use that. The one that I really, really love using is uh, Amazon S3 backups and the reason I like using Amazon S3 is um, it's run by Amazon 
it's uh, relatively inexpensive uh, and it's relatively secure. Uh, so, and, and I don't have to worry about having multiple web hosts to do what I need to do. Uh, so what I'm going to do um, is just show you how we can use Amazon. So in another video, uh, I'll show you how you can get all of this information uh, to use Amazon S3. Um, but uh, you just need to get your, your, your access key, your secret key, and set up a, a bucket for your, your backups. And I'll do that as a, as a subject of another video. Um, scrolling down a little bit more. Miscellaneous options, uh, the maximum number of archive backups. Now, if you're ever uncertain what that means, is if you just mouse over that little question mark, uh, it will tell you, you can tell Backup Buddy how many backups to archive before it starts overriding the first ones. This is great so that you don't end up with 12 months worth of backups. Um, I would probably recommend keeping um, a week to two weeks worth of backups, uh, but it really depends on how busy your site is and how often you're backing it up. Uh, the rest of this, this one here, Backup Non-WordPress Data Tables, depending on what plugins you put in, um, you may, may or may not need that. I tend to check it as standards just so that I can make sure that whatever is in my WordPress database I get it all. Uh, sometimes we might add a file um, or, or a table to do something else if we're creating custom functions. It's not it's not standard practice, but occasionally it does happen. Everything else I'm going to leave alone. Um, one of the things that I like about Backup Buddy is it will back up every folder that's in um, that, that, that's under the folder that your WordPress is installed in. So you can see uh, in, in this case, in the left-hand column here, I have CGI bin, which isn't a WordPress folder. WP admin is a WordPress folder. WP content is a WordPress folder and WP includes is. But you could also have like your uploads folder or your images folder. Uh, you might have um, a help desk system. You might have uh, a, f a separate forum that's not integrated with your WordPress and uh, they could well be in folders that appear here. Now if you want to try and limit the size of your data of your of your backup or you don't want to back up those folders all you need to do is click on the minus sign that's next to them you see that it puts it across to the right hand side uh, and when backup buddy runs it won't back up those folders that's sometimes really important if you've got a lot of folders there. Uh, make sure you click on Save Settings. That's really important if you've got a lot of folders that are, are just there um, and they might be legacy or, or hangover stuff from other times. Once you've done your settings for Backup Buddy, scroll down again to the Backup Buddy section. Um, if you click on the Backups menu, This will allow you to create a backup immediately. Um, and it will give you a list of backups that have been previously run. Now you've got the option, you've got two options of backups here. You've got a full backup or you've got a database only. Um, I tend to use database only when I'm about to go and upgrade plugins uh, or upgrade WordPress versions and I'll take a copy of my database so I can roll back if something goes wrong uh, or uh, a full backup will give you everything, it will give you your complete WordPress installation and it will give you it in a way that when you use import buddy which is, comes with backup buddy uh, you you literally just upload it to your server uh, say run import buddy uh, and it and it all works and that will be at the subject of another video and showing you how easy that is to do um, for now I'm just going to click on full backup though because that will give me everything I need so once you click on full backup the system goes off to do what it needs to do 